Hi everyone, welcome back and thanks for being here. If you guys are planning to build a mini ITE in an Intel platform, well, the ISUS ROG Strix B7060i gaming Wi-Fi, it might be one of your main choices. So, we will review this motherboard today and discuss why it might be a good choice for your system and let's see some of its features and compatibility with the latest CPU and memory. So let's unbox and see what we have inside. It is the motherboard itself, we will get to this in a minute. Let's check what are some of the accessories that comes with the motherboard. Usually the ROG motherboards have a lot of accessories, useful accessories that you need and you might use in your build. Okay, this is a sticker. Here we have the Wi-Fi antenna and here we have some dies. And here we have all these small standoffs and all these screws for the M.2 SSDs. And here is the thermal pad for the M.2 drive. You have to install this thermal pad for the M.2s and here we have the pad for the M.2 in case you have one of those one-sided M.2s. Let me show you guys what I mean. As we can see, for example, here we have the one-sided M.2s. So the one side is the M.2 itself and the other side doesn't have nothing. So you need to put this piece of plastic here for making the M.2 to don't bend when you're installing it. You have some SATA cables. This is a classic keychain from Asus. This is the adapter for the front panel ports. We'll get to that in a minute. This is a nice uh, adapter that I have included. And here we have the splitter for the USB 2.0 header. This motherboard have only one headers in case you are installing other accessories you need this splitter and here we have some other documentation one of these which is important is the manual of the motherboard so you guys should read carefully this manual for installing all your system and everything else. so this is something important that you should keep always with you when you are building and some other tickets and whatever so despite being a bit serious this motherboard have a lot of power as we can see here we have the vrm which has eight plus one plus two phases for a total of 80 ampere of power which is really a lot and this motherboard can handle with ease all the latest Intel CPUs out there. And as you can see here, we have the dissipation for all the VRM that are here. And here is the shield for all the ports that we have. We will get to that in a minute. And here we have also some RGB LEDs here. So let's dive through some ports and details. Here we have the eight pin power for the CPU. And here we have three port pin fan header. As we can see, this is for the case, this is for the AIO, and this is for the CPU. And here we have the RGB headers. One is uh, addressable RGB and the other one is normal RGB. Here we have the 24 pin for the power. and this these are the two slots of memory. This motherboard supports up to 96 gigabyte of memory. So keep in mind that this is the CPU slot. This motherboard is compatible with the latest 14 Intel CPU. Here we have the front panel header. Here we have the USB Gen 3 3.2 USB header. This is a USB 3.0 Gen 1 header. And here we have the four SATA ports. Here we have the front panel audio and then the USB 2.0 header here, which is placed in a strange position because shouldn't be an issue with a GPU installed here, but anyway, keep in mind that and here we have the PCI Gen 5 slot here we have also the CMOS if you want to reset the CMOS and here we have these two little jumpers for the temperature sensors moving on the back of the motherboard here we have another M.2 slot that you can use I will suggest you guys to install the M.2 on the back part of the motherboard because otherwise then you might need to uninstall all your motherboard if you want to upgrade if you want to change the M.2 drive here so here we have another M.2 drive let me unscrew this and check what we have under this cover here so here we have the slot for the NVMe drive drive with a quick release latch as we can see here this gray little thing and here we have the two thermal pads keep in mind to remove the plastic cover of the thermal pads when you are installing your NVMe drive otherwise it won't be dissipating the heat properly so here we have the back panel port here we have the HDMI and display here we have three USB 2.0 type A ports and three USB 3.2 gen 1 ports three of which are type A and one is type C that is here and here we have a USB 3.2 gen 2 port this is a 20 gigabit per second port this is gen 2 per 2 and here we have the wi-fi antenna and also all the audio jacks and here we have the lamp port of 2.5 gigabits so let's jump to the bios and check some settings and features that might be helpful all right guys here we are into the bios as you can see we have a simple overview of certain information temps and cpu core voltage and so on you can change the languages here if you want from english to other languages and you can go through some other settings even mem test which is a nice feature they have added in the motherboard now for checking some other settings we have to go through the advanced mode by typing f7 and then here we can go to ai tweaker and change the settings of our memory i suggest you guys to enable xmp always on your memory you can go xmp1 or 2 depending on your memory and of course you have to check the compatibility and the stability of the memories now again for being a b-series motherboard the asus rog strix 760 i gaming wi-fi have a lot of features here on the bios and you can change a lot of them vrm if you want the cpu power management uh, if you want to change 
change also. Now, if you go to the A Tweaker menu and Tweakers Paradise, here we have something new and a feature that I suggest you to enable and of course to test it, which is the switch micro code. Actually, we have a current micro code and if you change it to zero per 104 micro code, then okay, you have this notice changing and whatever, but changing this one will allow you to undervolt the CPU and overclock the CPU, maintaining those temps low and going, for example, if you enable that, you can go and start changing all the voltage settings and so on. So you are going to be able to get the best of it. Then this Asus motherboard, we have also this special feature, which is a nice thing in my opinion. So you might want to try out if you want. As for the rest of the menus is a typical Asus motherboard with all the settings and with all the sub menus that most of you guys already know. The Asus ROG Strix B760i gaming Wi-Fi is priced at around $200 and often can be found for less. This motherboard isn't exactly a first choice for overclocking, but you can tweak some settings on the bias. It can handle with ease even the latest Intel 14 Gen CPU. It has a decent slots for storage and with a PCI 5.0, it's a future proof. If you are building a mini ITX and don't need special future for extreme overclocking, I highly recommend this motherboard. If you found this video helpful and informative, hit the subscribe button, like, share and drop a comment and let me know your thoughts about this motherboard. This will help the channel a lot and allow me to bring more content like this. Thanks a lot for your support and thanks for watching.